So you know how most people do these kind of van tours all parked up in a pristine location with the doors open on the beach and it's a lovely sunny day and everything's perfectly clean? No, there's going to be none of that. We're in a car park, it's raining, it's still like wintry kind of weather even though it's right at the end of March. Um, yeah, it is going to be what it is. <laughs> Good morning. So we've woken up in the van, we're in a car park, and I was going to start this video by doing the usual like making a cup of tea business, but I realised we did that in the last one and we do it quite often to be honest, so maybe we, <laughs> we'll leave it out sometimes. Um, not really sure what else we can sort of show you of the first morning routine that's, um, you know, having a wee. I'm sure we don't really need to see that. We'd probably be chucked off YouTube anyway, so let's not do that. <laughs> um, but on that note, we are going to do something a little bit different for this video. Um, it's something we've wanted to do for a little while and we are going to commence that today in the best way we possibly can and I'll let Stephen tell you exactly what that is. So what's today's amazing plan then Stephen? Well I think the clue was in the title Dan. Oh yeah I forgot about that. <laughs> Gives it away. It's a van tour so what we're going to do is we're going to have to tidy up because we're a bit filthy so we need to clean up before we show anybody anything but we'll show you everything. We'll show you the kind of the outside and the bits and bobs that we've got we'll also show you all the really ugly stuff and the broken stuff so it's not going to be a kind of fancy van tour it's going to be we're in a kind of what how old is she uh nearly 30 years 27 yeah, eight years i guess 27 year old van with lots of crumbly bits but we love her so we're going to show her all her best bits too warts and all yeah let's go let's go And I'm not going to show this because it is absolutely disgusting and nobody needs to see it, but we're now going to clean out the fridge. It's the worst and most difficult job. Actually, it probably isn't, but it's just horrible because it's in such an awkward position. You have to bend at a strange angle. There's no comfortable way to do it. So let's see how we do. If we never manage to clean it perfectly, which we rarely do because it's so back-breaking, uh, you'll just see it as is, I'm afraid, however that turns out. <laughs> yes. We all like a bit of mould, right? Aye. <laughs> Okay, so the logistics of this is proving far more complicated than it needs to be. It's probably just us, to be honest. I don't know. <laughs> we probably should have prepped for this beforehand. Um, but before we show you the interior of the van, let's give you a little tour of the outside and some of the bits and bobs that belong to the outer shell, if you like, of our little home. Right, so this is the bit where we show you the outside of the van because you've never seen that before. These are our matching dents. From so our wonderful is, accidents there. This is where I hit a a trucky thing this is where I hit a wall thing she does open up at the back we can get in there and it's not very interesting <laughs> <laughs> and riveting stuff this is, this is where we fill up our gas that's our LPG that we had fitted last yeah. year at some point so we've got a we've got one of those safe fill bottles that only go up to about 80% right moving on to more interesting stuff so I let you hook up. This is ventilation. I think this is ventilation for the for the cooker. I That's think. code for we don't actually have a clue. That's ventilation for the fridge because I can feel it's warm. That's for our water heater, which we'll show you later. This is a six. I think a sixty liter water tank, which takes absolutely ages to fill up. Yep. All right. This down here. Is where we empty our waste. Now you'll see it's still broken and we still haven't fixed it and we probably won't until we're absolutely forced to. And what's in there is, I don't know if it's a champagne cork or if it's a bottle of Prosecco cork, but that's how we stop our wastewater coming out. And it works. And it works. <laughs> but the reality is we do need to fix that. However, it is perfect for now. And we do have spare corks in case that one, you know, stops working or breaks down but I know it's not ideal but who else has a cork in their van right so now I'm gonna take you through everything I know about this engine it's an engine And obviously, if you've seen some of our videos before, you'll have seen when we were in Scotland, we had the door painted, but the weather was terrible for two weeks. So we only got <laughs> this middle door, which had lots of rust on it. We got that sorted out and then we got it painted. However, we ran out of time, which meant these two side bits and the top 
are now a kind of different colour and they always look completely unwashed. Uh, we only took her through the wash yesterday, um, but you wouldn't be able to tell because the paint just looks really off. <laughs> so at one point we'll get that sorted out, I'm sure. This side, however, it is all a lot more uniform, which is quite good. And she is an old van, so there are little pockets of rust here and there. Uh, we did sort some last year, but we didn't get to do all of it. We're a little bit concerned because we did do the wheel arches. Well, we say we, we had a great deal of help, of course. Um, thank you, Tam, for that, because that was a lifesaver. Uh, but yeah, we're a bit concerned because it is coming back again, and it's been about only six months, I think. So something to keep an eye on. So you know how most people do these kind of van tours all parked up in a pristine location with the doors open on the beach and it's a lovely sunny day and everything's perfectly clean? No, there's going to be none of that. We're in a car park, it's raining, it's still like wintry kind of weather even though it's right at the end of March. Um, yeah, it is going to be what it is. <laughs> This is how it is. It's not a B&Q showroom, you know. We haven't even decorated properly. Um, I'm not even going to pretend that we're going to do that because we said that before and it never happened. So maybe if I say we won't do it, we will actually do it. Welcome to the back door. <laughs> See, even the bird thought it was funny. So we've got the one that kind of just swings up, open and upwards, not the ones that swing outwards. I mean, that's pretty obvious, isn't yeah, it? But I'm not sure what, which, what which, each one is called. It's yeah. a door anyway. It's a door. So this might look filthy, but it's just age. And I don't know how you even clean or paint this type of material. No it's, idea. It's really, it's very old. And this stuff here is obviously like, it's the right state and it's yeah. sorted. And we don't see it until you open the back door really, but it, it probably just needs re-carpeting or something. I mean, she's, she's 28 years old. <laughs> yeah. And this is the original features, isn't it? All of, all of yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's all original stuff. It just needs people who know how to fix it yeah right let's show you so that's our gas that we showed you earlier so that's our lpg gas we used to have cala gas um and that went in there as well but when since we got the lpg which uh, stephen showed you earlier filled up from the outside um that's that's where it goes into now yeah which obviously feeds the fridge and the cooker yes this cupboard is just where the cassette is i'm not going to show you inside because i ain't going to clean it <laughs> quite frankly we don't use it it's not dirty but it's probably very dusty and it's not that interesting either so but that's where the cassette goes for the loo for the loo yeah. which we never use we do but we'll come to that in a minute slightly differently and then last but not least this is where we just keep our electric cable and our hose yeah it just gets stuffed in that's just there. easy access isn't it so when we're on a campsite we can just get the wire out pretty quickly yeah. and the hose Again, it looks filthy, but it's not really, it's really not us. <laughs> For once, it's actually not us. You just can't, I don't know, even know how you clean this No, stuff. there is a lot of wear and tear and age on these things. And it's fine because we don't sort of, you know, we don't have to look at that stuff so much. It's just no. practical things. Oh, it's all a bit personal, isn't it? Our little bathroom, yeah. showing that off. A bit weird. So anyway, this is our toilet, which we don't really use. But instead of having chemicals, we tend to use um, food waste bags and... Compost, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, food composting bags and cat litter. <laughs> and then we use it once, and it's already there set up. It is clean, I promise. And then that goes in the dog bin yeah. when we're finished, and we do that every time. So it's important to point out that we do when it comes to those things we try to use toilets on the go for that yeah, for, yeah, for right. number twos let's just say that shall we so yeah. we try and use it on the go and we use toilets on the go um we use them at campsites wherever we're stopping out and about so that is kind of for emergencies on that mm -hmm. front shall i get him and show him the shower yeah if you want the shower we never actually use by the way but right so this sitting on my phone <laughs> this is where we would have a shower if we showered, but because we're filthy and never wash, we never use it. So, just to point out, see, we do shower, but we just don't use this one. And you'll yeah. see why, because it's a pain. It's, it's quite awkward, really. I mean, it's got hot, hot water and we'd use it in a bind, but generally we don't bother because we tend to keep so much stuff out here, like yeah. our mattress, you know, our, our bottle, bottles that we use for wee. All of our clothes are in these cupboards. Um, 
so we don't want to have steam going in and making all of our clothes mouldy now it gets mouldy enough in these places as it is yeah so we tend not to use that but we would if we if we had to if we really had to it would work and it would be fine you know we fill up the water and it would work but the fact is as Stephen just said it is packed full of storage like you can barely move out here which is also why we try to use uh go to the toilet on the go like when we're out and about in places rather than use yeah. it so it's very much a last resort however the wee thing uh yes we do go in bottles yeah. and we would of course dispense of them people want i mean it's a bit gross isn't it but sometimes you want to know these things so we will dispense of them in toilets because it is just urine yep so apart from that we've got our little sink which is where we keep all the bits we need for the toilet we don't use that sink we don't really use this at all apart from storage underneath here is a shower tray where all the water that gets collected goes it's just got this bit of liner over the front it's been there since we've got it but there is a shower tray and this is here is part of our heating system but we'll talk about that in a minute and other than that that's our bathroom and i fit i fit fine look I'm it fine. is absolutely fine I'm and tiny, in, it's arguably bigger than some some bathrooms that people have in bigger vans i think yeah. Yeah. so there's definitely some benefits and it's worth pointing out we never actually did this and we probably will do but there's doors there so that does close so you can go to toilet in private they don't close very easily but they close <laughs> there we go there we go and obviously when this is shut you put the back blind uh the window here you'd put the back blind up so no one can see in through the back either the back blind that we've just broken we've just broken that but whatever and that's it that's the bathroom let's, that is the lavatory move on let's I'll just, move on i'll just finish up all right see you later. Yeah, all right then i'll leave you to it you got any toilet roll no i don't need it oh well well we're just gross aren't we yeah and we didn't say, I don't think, but the reason we don't use our toilet as a chemical toilet is because we, there's a couple of reasons. One, we just thought it was a bit more environmentally friendly to have the compost one. Now, I know you're still chucking it away, but it feels a bit better than chemicals going into the system. Um, but the other thing, and arguably it's the main one, because we're based in the UK, trying to dispense of your chemical toilet can be quite tricky. Um, so you'd always have to be on campsites. Now we do stay on campsites, uh, maybe once a week, maybe slightly less often than that, but you know, there might be times when you you really need to empty it and you can't. So we just wanted to avoid that and we wanted to use a compostable one that we use once and get rid of. As we said, it's very rarely used for number twos. It's just in a bind, but it has been there and it has been a lifesaver. Now, what I'm really curious about, those people that have those compostable toilets, do let us know in the comments if you've got one of these. The ones that have actually, you know, the ones that are kind of portable and you move about and put in a cupboard somewhere or whatever. How often can you go in one of those before you have to empty it? And if you can go several times, doesn't that mean you've got loads stacked up to get rid of? Like, how, how does it work? I'm really fascinated to know. So that's another thing with this. Obviously, if we do number two in it, then obviously it's kind of one and done. You know what I mean? It's done, bagged up, we get rid of it um, responsibly. But if you've got one of those compost toilets, how, how much do you actually use how much do you do before you get rid of it uh, <laughs> i'd really love to know so answers down below please if you could if you do know and if you've used one before that would really help because you know i'm just fascinated to know that kind of thing and yeah the we thing so in case that got a bit lost earlier or we didn't include it for whatever reason um yes it we do often go in bottles basically so obviously you need to go for number ones more often than you go for number twos so in that instance we will have to use because we don't use ours as a chemical toilet it means we have to find an alternative which for having a wee is going in a bottle um that might sound gross to some of you i, I don't know maybe some of you are like well yeah of course you're in a van um you will be surprised there will be a huge amount of people living in vans of all sizes that will do that um and you can buy all kinds of proper bottles for it you can buy appropriate things that are specifically designed for that um and then you just dispense of them accordingly in toilets when you can so that's how we do that uh it's quite fiddly at times it can be quite annoying if it's one of those daily things because of course you have to find uh you have to empty them most days but it is what it is i still don't think even though we could have a wee in the chemical toilet and do it all in one i don't think we'd, we'd want to do that we'd have to be on a campsite all the time in order for that to be worthwhile basically um otherwise you'll kind of you'd really struggle to find places to empty it so yeah it's not perfect out here it could do with sprucing up of course it could but it's absolutely functionable and we're very grateful to have it yeah 
Also, if anybody does know what this material is, and if we can paint it or do anything with it, please let us know because it's it's so stained over the years that yeah. you can't get any of that off without just scrubbing the whole material off. So if anybody does know, let us know. Which kind of also applies to the toilet as well. And I know it looks horrible. I know it does. I feel weird filming this. This is all a bit personal, but it's not. It it's just where it's faded over time yeah, isn't yeah. it it's so old it's that it's gone that aged color um yeah <laughs> if we could spruce that up even better but it's usually covered in junk so we don't have to look at it anyway so Aye, whatever that's true that's true so also at the back here along with our bathroom stuff that's just randomly stacked there we've got several cupboards um so this one here mostly it's random junk i mean look you've got washing up liquid a saucepan there's stuff stuff down the sides again that's just age i think we can't seem to get that off actually i'm not sure we've tried so just ignore that <laughs> i don't know what it is just storage in general a few things we have hanging on the shower um rack like pegs and things that we hang things on and these are clothes cupboards which generally get stuffed in and we've got a larger clothes cupboard here it's all kind of stacked up from the bottom really it would be helpful to have shelves in there um, because if you need something from the bottom well obviously it's a total nightmare but really lucky to have that amount of space and down the side there's some valves which are to do with the gas but do we actually really know what they are Stephen or not properly, not properly. okay we'll just ignore that so because we've had problems with our blinds um, they really need replacing we'll go into all that in a bit uh, Stephen did something really ingenious actually he made something Hardly. no it is okay it's a little bit crudely done bear in mind lack of like craft skills or anything I thought this was really imaginative what he did was he bought some blackout curtain material um, just material it was blackout material and he stapled some velcro around the edges yeah it's very rough around the edges and you know they're a bit sharp with the staples but what we do is then where we've had trouble with the blinds which usually happens when it's wet and cold and they get stuck and it takes ages to open them basically um we just stick these velcro things because as you know probably noticed we've got kind of like carpet material around the van um and at the back and then two at the front which we'll show you in a bit we just stick this material over and it completely blocks out the light which takes a lot it's a lot quicker than the blinds mm. in the current state they are the blinds so are painful good. they are very painful i'd rather they got fixed and sorted but as a temporary solution we say temporary it'll probably go on forever <laughs> this is pretty mm. good so well done stevie Aye. they are a bit awkward but they're really good and they're better it does than a job. the blinds <laughs> It does the job, yeah. So in, since you just saw the bathroom bit, we've now kind of put stuff back. It's only half back. This is just full of junk, uh, usually including our mattress, which is currently behind Stephen. And of course, when we start filming bits from the front, that will then go back. So this is actually a lot more, uh, what's the word? Fiddly. Fiddly. Than it's it difficult. Seems. It's like Tetris. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> Nothing is as empty as it seems. Every time we're filming a bit of this van for this video, uh, half of it is behind the camera in order for us to actually be able to see it yeah. and for you to see it okay so let's say we don't work for you yeah let's move on to the kitchen area the kitchen get to the kitchen okay and now we're going to show you the absolutely gigantic and vast kitchen that we cook in which is at the back of our bedroom yes. and in front of the toilet which we can't fit in no <laughs> but i can stand up in it so that's a plus at six foot one nearly six two that is pretty amazing in this little van yeah anyway on to the kitchen so this is our gas cooker uh you've seen this many many times before so we don't need to focus on it too much and that clips up like that so obviously it's a counter in normal circumstances um and then obviously when you're using it as a cooker this just clips up there with a bolt and it's got two hobs. We only ever really use one because they're quite close together and the left hand hob is very close to the buttons, the knobs basically, the gas things. So it doesn't ever tend to be practical. So we only really use this one, hence why that one looks quite a bit cleaner than that one. Um, <laughs> we did clean the cooker, but it does get in a state quite quickly. So it's something you try. we try to keep on top of, although we don't that often if we're being honest. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it, that's our fabulous cooker. And the gas lasts quite a long time for that. I think we've said that before as well, but if you've got the heating on, it'll run out quickly. But for your cooker, once you fill up a 10 pound bottle of gas, that's how much it costs us to fill up from empty, mm. uh, about 10 pounds. Yeah, it lasts weeks, if not longer. A couple of months. A couple of months, easy. So yeah, 
not too bad at all. And just to address the potential elephant in the room, um, although there's lots and lots of these things around the van dotted about, but this, this has got, this was like that to start with, I think, but it's got a little bit worse over time. Um, we don't know how to necessarily repair that. We can just cover it up, of course we can, um, but I don't know how we fix it specifically. I'm not even sure what this is. It looks like some kind of covering over the wood. So it's not very nice because you can see it all the time. So any ideas on how to fix that or improve it without just kind of plastering something over the top to hide it uh, would be much appreciated. Do we need to take off all of it and start from scratch or can we just touch that bit up? Answers on a postcard, please, or in the comments if you do know, that'd be really helpful. And the other thing is this needs resealing. Now that is something we can do, we just haven't got around to. Shock, horror, I know you're probably very surprised at that. Uh, so it's a little sealant, we do need to do that because I'm sure fluid gets on here all the time and we need to fix that up to prevent it going down the sides. Underneath here, we've actually got a grill, which we rarely use, but you can grill things if you want to make toast or just grill things that way. Um, I'm not even going to show you because that does need cleaning out. And right now there's yesterday's dinner in there in a saucepan. So we're going to probably have that for lunch, but we just don't need to see it, do we really? So <laughs> we'll move swiftly on. Now the fridge, again, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's an original feature. You can use it via electric when you're on hookup. Or what we do is when we're not on hookup on a campsite, we tend to use it through uh, via gas. And I'm not sure how long that lasts, but we've never had problems where we felt like it's run out. I'm pretty sure it uses a very small amount. So you just turn the knob, turn this knob here, flick the ignition, and then of course the gas lights the fridge up. And it works pretty well right now. It's very cold, which is nice. But as I was saying earlier, the fridge is a total nightmare to clean. It, it's like a backbreaker, I think partly to do with this step down here where the doors close, it's really difficult to get in and out of. So cleaning it wasn't much fun. I'm gonna show you very, very briefly. There we go. It's not perfect in there, but there's a decent amount of space for what it is. Um, we've got a few things in there at the moment and there's also a little place where you can uh, freeze things as well, like an ice, what do you call it? An ice box, ice cupboard, I don't know but that freezes things. So it's not too bad. We do tend to run out of space quite quickly, but it's pretty good. And directly above the cooker, we've got some storage cupboards. So these are our food cupboards. They all press in and out like that. So this is our main food cupboard. Right now, it's actually pretty organized. That's because there's hardly anything in there. Well, there is stuff in there, but it's kind of at its limit, really. Uh, usually we have things stacked in all sorts of strange piles and we can't get to things. Um, we do have problems with damp in this cupboard. Condensation, perhaps from cooking just below it. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, we've got the vent directly above us, but that doesn't always help. So we often have to clean that out and air it and try and just remove things because mold can build up in there um, you can't see it now because it's well it's hidden with packets and we did sort it sort it out kind of to some degree recently and our little gas kettle which has seen better days but it's done us a really good turn over the last two years at least um, yeah we just put it on the hob it works obviously it's in a bit of a state but you know it does the job doesn't it mm. our trusty kettle so oh very quickly by the way this is another one of those things Stephen made um, and we actually put it on a kind of net curtain wire because again guess what the blind doesn't work properly mm. so that one looks very rough around the edges but it is like total blackout which is great so the sink is on the other side of the cooker which is just me turning around on the spot I feel like one of those lazy Susans when I'm cooking mm. all I have to do is just rotate to one side chop up or use the sink or whatever and then I just rotate to the other side but thank God I can stand up. I know I said it earlier, but I cannot tell you how good that is because I don't think you would have ever got this van if I couldn't stand up in at least some part of it. It would have been impossible, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, that was an essential for me, including sleeping flat as well. But anyway, onto the sink because I digress. So this does exactly the same as the cooker. Still some stuff on there. Um, it just unclips and then pops up there with a bolt with some difficulty these days, but we, we managed to get it in. And our tap is attached to the underside. And you've got a hot and cold tap. We rarely use the hot water for this, um, but you can do it. You've got a water heater. It just takes a little while to heat up and get going. Um, but the cold water we do use. So this is our sink, draining board. 
that all goes down to the water a wastewater tank which we showed you earlier that we empty via taking out the Prose prosecco cork <laughs> mm. that's how the wastewater comes out when we're over an appropriate drain so this is a sink this is our water tap i have just turned the water on so hopefully it's going to work there we go sometimes it doesn't work you know sometimes we have times if we're parked on a slope or for reasons we don't know it doesn't actually work but mostly it does so water there we wash up in our red bowl don't know what else to say it's a bloody sink yeah that's it we don't need to look at a sink do we i'm gonna turn the water off and directly above the sink, another storage cupboard, exactly the same size as the food one you just saw. And this one we use for plates, all sorts of things, very overripe bananas. I mean, it's just a free for all cupboard in some ways, but cereal things or random stuff, our mugs for tea, tea bags and all kinds of things like that. I mean, what are these? Vitamin B1, which is supposed to be good for you. I don't know what for, but we've got them. Magnesium, oh, it's supposed to be good for something. I don't know what for, but we've got them. Yeah, a cupboard of all sorts. And that's actually much emptier and more organized than it usually is. So <laughs> you saw it on a good day. And below the sink, you've got a whole other set of cupboards and things as well. So but directly beneath it, um, there's storage, which we put kind of cleaning things. And it's exactly the same the other side. And you've got all these drawers which are not terribly organized so that's our cutlery drawer I mean it's yeah <laughs> we could organize that a bit better but we know where the stuff is we've got this so it's all sorts of things anything they're kind of free for all drawers exactly the same in all the others and this cupboard here directly below the sink um, usually it's absolutely packed with our washing but we did that recently so that's why it's not full of washing um, you can see all our water pipes there as well uh, and we tend to chuck any old thing in there if we can't find any other space for it uh, we've got these drawer organizers so they're to sort out our drawers but we haven't actually done it yet so I'll put them back in so I can forget about it and I don't know what this bit of wood has broken off of I'm sure it needs to go somewhere but I'm just going to put it back in so I can forget about it and just to prove the point we were making about the bathroom earlier, that's it with not even everything put back in. We've got our mattress there, um, which has got a cover on it, uh, all sorts of bits and bobs, coats and things hung up and bags. You can't even see the toilet now, so you can understand why we try to limit our use of that. <laughs> But we always have it ready, so there has been some frantic times in the middle of the night where you just can't wait. You know, it happens, doesn't it? And you've got to answer to the calls of your body where we wake up and we have to remove absolutely everything, chuck it down the front, which usually means chucking it on the bed if it's set up uh, so we can actually use the toilet. We've also got two air vents, so there's one in the toilet area, uh, slightly smaller, and we've got this one here. Uh, they've got the mosquito kind of nets, or whatever you want to call them, just to stop insects getting in, which are absolutely filthy, and we really need, the only answer is to get a hoover to it. But of course we don't have a hoover in the van, so we need to use one at some point. Um, yeah, <laughs> they're absolutely awful. We've even tried, we've tried brushing it, we've tried, and I'm showing it to you in a slightly more flattering light, but... We've tried putting sellotape on, all kinds of things. Uh, it needs a proper spring clean, that does. But the vents themselves, they're pretty easy to use. If you saw one of our earlier videos, we lost one at one point, or nearly did. It came flying off on the M5 in some windy weather, um, and I kind of had to jump in the back very quickly to hold the one remaining handle down with a belt to stop it disappearing completely and you know causing an accident potentially by hitting a car behind so we had a new vent fitted and they're pretty good quite light so when you're cooking and stuff this is quite handy but as i say it doesn't always necessarily get rid of everything like all the steam but it's better than nothing and what i will say about these vents as well if it's raining you can still have them open now i wouldn't necessarily do it for hours on end but it, it the rain doesn't come in just because you've got them open so that's quite nice if you want to let some air in so as you can see that just needs sorting out they're so difficult to clean um we could probably make more effort if we're being completely honest but yeah i think a hoover is the answer for this unless you've got any better ideas because a lot of people have these sorts of things so if you've got any tips how to clean that quite easily do let us know 
I'm now wondering how many people are going to watch this and think, my God, these two are disgusting. Like, how can they live like this? We suddenly see our subscriber count just drop entirely. Um, we're not that bad. You know, it's rough and ready. It's not perfect. And we kind of wanted to show that. Um, but we get by, you know, and what, what do you need? What do you need sometimes? It doesn't have to be perfect. We've never been like that. So I'm really sorry. We can't promise to show you all these fancy looking things and everything being wonderful it's it's just not how it is uh, but we're very happy in this van you know we, we still manage to live a life like anyone does in any van and we love it you know for all our moaning yeah we're really grateful for it it's just a bit rough around the edges but you know it's okay okay so next up we're going to take you around our fabulous lounge yes welcome to our gracious drawing room where we have a table what a luxury. And chairs. <laughs> <laughs> we have chairs. So, there's not much to really say about this area, is there? It's kind of, it, it, it is what you can see. We've got our swivel chairs at the front, so they turn around when we drive um, and move back and forth so, it, so we can make the bed. We've got our two chairs. Both of these have got seat belts, so we can carry two passengers in the back if we wish, but we don't like people, so we won't be doing that. Um, and we have another table that can go up here um, and it, it's, it's quite low though so we tend not to use it unless we're eating here and we want stuff to put here like we did on our Christmas video for anybody that looks on Christmas video we put our food down here um, yeah there's not really much to say about this here, well you're really you? selling our gracious drawing room aren't well, you here I mean she's gracious but you know she was gracious in the 90s not, not now <laughs> Yeah, so there isn't much to say about it. You've seen this many times before. Um, the thing about this part is usually if we're going to sit and relax in it, we're more likely just going to set up the bed so we can just lie down. There's more space. It's more comfortable, um, which is where, of course, this area is. If you haven't seen our videos before, this is also our bed area <laughs> as well. So we have to build and break it every time. Um, but otherwise, no, as Stephen said, it's just seats. They turn around, which is good. And the other table, we're not going to set it up because it's just, you know, it's just another table, but it's they go side by side and we can do different things like that. Um, what's quite good is you can set up half a bed so that you don't have to put up the whole bed. So you can have one of the chairs, because these ones here, they they pull out basically to lie flat. So you can kind of have like a long bench type effect if you want. Um, we rarely do that, but sometimes when we have done it, it has been really useful. Um, in particular, if we've been at work and one person is sleeping, for example, and the other person isn't, we can set up half a bed, like a single bed if you like. Other than that, that's our lounge. Should we show them a single bed? Yeah. Let's, let's show them a, a single bed. bed. And then later on at the end of the video, because we'll be setting up our bed, we'll do you a little fast track of us putting up the bed. Yeah, because you've never seen that a thousand times before. No. But we, it seems important in this one, so... And I look forward to it every day. <laughs> right. It. So Stephen is currently setting up the single bed of sorts. Those are our weights down there, by the way. We've barely used them, but we are determined to do that. So they're still there. In their box. In their box. Well, half in their box. Well, it just really doubles as like, you know, a gracious armchair of sorts. Yeah, but it does a job and you can do it with this side as well. It's just that obviously because it's by the door, it's more convenient to do it that side so you can still get in and out. Um, it's not so ideal for me because that side's a bit shorter. I don't know how to explain it, but it kind of is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, the steering wheel's in the way. Yeah, the steering wheel, that's right. So that chair can't go back as far as this one. Um, so not perfect for me but I have slept on it like that and it does do in a bind. Uh, quite often I'll sleep with my sort of legs up, knees up anyway. Nice. That's all right. It's, you're, you're really selling it, Steve. It looks pretty comfortable. Yeah. See, now we're thinking, why don't we do this more often? The reality is, though, when we're in a van, as I said, it's like if we want to get comfortable, we'll just set the bed up so we can sit and lounge on that. Um, because we're always moving, we're always doing something, whatever it is. It's not like being in this van is. It has. It's given us more time, but your time is filled with lots of different things. Mm. So by the time we want to sit down and do not very much, we're just gonna set the bed up. Still, it looks pretty good like that. Back up now. Yeah. <laughs> and just above the two front chairs, 
in our gracious drawing room we've got more storage i'm not going to open it there's just all sorts of different things in there bits and bobs like they're they're packed full of nonsense so that's what that is but there's more storage than you think you know and we probably don't utilize it as best as we could this is the shelf of joy hello the traveling family yeah we don't know why we've got all of these I don't, just, know we, 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 I don't know why we had them we just we can't get them, rid of them can we but we don't want to get rid of them we like them and we they're do. all original 90s toys like yeah not, i mean who doesn't love gizmo right they're not knockoffs no this is it's just our little traveling companion our little uh security guard that keeps watch from the window along with sebastian they're best friends sometimes bill and ben or maybe they're a couple i don't know bill and ben, bill and ben. Some more gizmos, which is probably yeah. a bit of overkill. But they are original toys. They're like, we could probably sell them if we wish, but we don't want to. So that's our attempts at brightening things up. It is, yeah. That's about as fancy as it gets. Yeah, that's as much as you're getting. So, I think there's not much more to say about in here, apart from our blinds, which are rubbish. Yeah. So I have to pull this down and then put it back up by hand, because I lent on it and broke it. Because this is the thing with this ban, it's that everything's old so as soon as you try to make it any better or you touch it in the wrong way it breaks because the plastic is so old it just snaps all of the time so yeah it's not a case of not cleaning it it's a case of don't touch it in case it breaks <laughs> <laughs> and on that note can we just say very quickly our top side windows there and one the other side um i can't remember which one it is but it we tried to open it once and the entire thing just fell out now we've put it back in but we've never opened it again since have we <laughs> so we've never actually resolved the problem we just put it back in pretended it didn't happen and yeah we've not touched it um but you know what it's a shame because it'll be nice to open those windows so maybe we should do a list of things we need to do if there's one good thing to come out of this video yeah. it's things that we need to do to the van or at least give it a good go like you said to me earlier yeah. at least if we try it is making me realize just how much we should be doing really but, yeah. yeah maybe we need a list because it feels a bit overwhelming now yeah it does but that's okay one step at a time or no steps yeah whatever we feel like so moving swiftly on another one of my lovely makeshifts <laughs> to go over these because they let even with the blinds they let in too much light didn't they yeah so we had to have something just to point out again because we've forgotten we do still use some of the blinds some of them still work completely fine um but these top ones for some reason they don't actually stuck um they don't they, you can still see some light from outside so this completely blocks it and i mean entirely you cannot see mm. a speck of light through it so yeah so we wild camp quite a lot really we you see we stayed on um what are those things lay bys quite a lot or you know we'll stay in the woods or whatever and really you want to come be as inconspicuous as you can be in a camper van like this so we want to keep the light out from the outside as much as we can but so that's why we've got those is that what wild camping is stephen in a lay by well, wild camping, <laughs> there'll be people really, furious at that call it? it's like oh i don't know a van that ain't a campsite so who cares what the terminology exactly. is it's just funny some people will get bent out of shape about that oh well never mind we'll leave them to it put it in a letter yeah that's it anyway moving on so now to the kind of final bits so despite daisy actually being quite an old van and needing lots of repairs and looking grubby here and there she actually has quite, quite a few mod cons really for her day i think she was probably quite an expensive van when she was first built so we have so up here this little black box is our propex heating so on the one side it will go up go and make it warm which is this side but we actually got air conditioning as well yep and all of that runs off of gas so that comes off our bottle this is this is hot water so that we actually have a boiler to heat up hot water this also runs on gas so it only needs a small amount of electric to light the boiler and then the rest is on gas and it doesn't seem to use that much either it takes about half an hour to heat up we don't really use it very often i do try and use it a couple of times a year just because you have to keep using things otherwise they're going to break so that, that's that up here we've got the good old panel so this is our leisure battery that's our uh, van battery and that's just off for when we're on hookup this is the water pump the light doesn't work anymore and sometimes the pump doesn't work and this is tells us water level but it never actually does anything it's a bit useless that one isn't it oh, we don't no, really no, need no. it it tells us it tells us that we're a bit full but 
when you read in the manual it says it doesn't really tell you that so i don't know what the purpose of it yeah is. Well, it's never benefited us put it that way yeah. so we've got normal plugs you can, can't see through the rubbish this one we use to charge our mobile phone so that runs off a 12 volt and then that's obviously the 24 volt when we're on a hookup and down here there's another plug this is also for the water heater but that's for if you're on electric hookup so you can use the electric instead of your gas which we rarely really use in here oh we've got all of our fuse box it's all very grubby and dirty and i ain't cleaning it um and this is attached to a mppt charge controller for our solar panel so we can charge our leisure battery and there's various other bits and bobs we're not going to go into every nook and cranny but like for example the seats we're sitting on now um although they spin around we can have storage underneath which is unaffected so usually our socks and pants go under there basically <laughs> that's what's yeah. under there um yeah there's loads of little things like that there's holes in the doors there's all sorts of things we just stuff things in if you're in a van you know um even in a house you do that don't you you know you always find little nooks and crannies so you get creative with space but I'm still not sure we've really mastered it. No, I don't think we've. I don't we think have. we've done anything of the sort, but. No. <laughs> you get used to playing about with it. Yeah. I don't think there's anything left to show, really. Apart from what you'll see in the video, as I said earlier, we'll show you when we put up the bed and put up the front blinds. You can see what it's all like when it's all shut down, ready for the night. If there's anything that we've forgotten and you want to see, let us know. I don't think you need to see the front where the driver's bit is because that's all just your bog standard kind of driving-y bit, if yeah. you like. You know, it's the steering wheel. Ooh. <laughs> the glove yeah. box. I think the thing is with this van as well, like mechanically, she's still really good. That's what yeah. our mechanic tells us. You know, she says me mechanically, she's still really good. And I don't want to say that too loud in case she breaks. Yeah, don't keep it. <laughs> but, and she, she'd cost about, Depends on the price of fuel, she costs nearly £100 to fill up the tank properly from nothing. And we get about 500 miles, maybe maybe 600 miles out of that if we're motorway travelling. Um, but other than that, I don't know anything else, else about vehicles to tell you anything. No, I think that's the bulk of it. And that's it. She's not perfect, but she's ours and we love yeah, her. She's our, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But we should make a list and we should start doing some bits and pieces. Yeah. And that's On that it. No, you might see that in a hundred videos time if you're lucky. <laughs> if you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> or unlucky because it might not even be whatever, but yeah. All right. And that's it really. So we'll probably see you later just for the final bit to put the bed up. Or if we do anything else for this video because we don't know how long it's going to take. No, there might be some bits we chuck in that we've forgotten. But other than that, I think you've seen Daisy, you've seen the van, you've seen our little home. Yep. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Hope we didn't make it too boring for you. Yep, we did. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is what it is, isn't it? It's like home details. Like, what are you going to say? What else? What can you really say? Yeah, I know. I know. Well, but I think it's 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 nice for people to see the the nooks and crannies, the bits and bobs, and how we live. And you know, because you don't always see that. Sometimes you just see us go on a nice walk or something. So mm. yeah, it's just nice to do that. And I think it's good to see that you know not everybody's got a really fancy van, you know, and and, and actually anybody that is in a van and has been in it long enough will know that they've got 101 jobs that they need to do that they're still putting off just like us. No matter how nice or expensive your van is, that's still going to be the case as well. Mm. You know, you're always going to have different jobs you need to do for these things. Yeah. Shall we just end this? Yeah. <laughs> Bye. I'm telling you to end it now. <laughs> right, we'll see you on the next bit. Is this the end of the video or not? I don't know yet. I can't be bothered to think about it. We might be um, doing something else tomorrow. We don't know yet. We'll see. We'll see how long it is. <laughs> right, we're we're going to go now because we're bored of this as well. Yeah, all right, We've then. bored you so much, we're now bored. Yeah, I'm falling asleep. Yeah, bye. Bye. But on that note, we're going to finish the uh, the setup. Yeah, we're just going to show you the last bit and then we're going to settle down. As if you've not seen this before, but it feels incomplete yeah. without it, doesn't it? Yes. That's chair number one. So in, in theory, you can set up two single beds and still have the center yeah. Yeah, separate. Yeah. yeah, if you've had a row, you don't want to do <laughs> you can just set up separate beds and just, I don't know. You can storm off and sleep exactly one foot away. Ignore each other. And then we have to move these. And then we have to move this. Which is our solar panel. It's our solar. It lives down there when the bed's up. Then we have to put the table away. Then we have to pull this out. 
now we've got our two divorcee beds. Yeah. And then, these were made by the chap who had the van before us. He got one of his engineer friends to make it for him. But basically they go, you can see little, two little hooks. And one. So they're bed supports, they hold up the middle and thank God we've got them, thank God the previous owner made them because they, without them, it would fall through. Yeah, it would. And it still occasionally does, even with them. And then you have to get on the bed and put it in. Oh, before I do that though, these bits here are all broken. If anybody knows what these entire pieces are called, let us know because we want some new ones. They're supports, aren't they? Of some yeah. are they metal? Yeah. Well, they're supposed to be plastic. Oh, okay. But the plastic's all broken off, and that means. But isn't it metal within a plastic yeah. coating? Yeah. So we, yeah, they're they're in a bad state. They weren't brilliant when we we first got the van, um, and it still holds up. But we do need to replace them. But because the plastic isn't there, this slips down all the time, and it's really annoying. Yeah. It means you can't sort of, you couldn't like roll from one side of the bed to the other without worrying about the middle falling out. Uh, so we do need those side bits, as Stephen was saying, the supports replaced. And that's it, and that's how the bed goes up. And then the blinds go down, and the mattress goes on top, and that's it, and we're done for the day. Mattress goes on, and then of course, which is a mattress topper, I think we've talked about it before, that's our duvet, but behind me is the mattress topper, um, which is a, really su supports our backs and just helps it yeah, be, just, be more comfortable. Very comfortable without no, for about six months we slept in this, yeah, we did. just on this, with a duvet on top, and it wasn't enough because it's so hard. Um, yeah. So yeah, once the mattress topper goes on, the duvet and the sheets mm. and whatever get unraveled. Yep. And that's it. And we that's pull the it. pillows out of storage. That's it. We promise we won't ever do a van tour again. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> right, so thank you for joining us on our little van tour yesterday. Um, I hope you maybe enjoyed some of it and if you didn't i hope you're not running away screaming in fear thinking mm. my god i'm not watching those two again how can they possibly live like they live um maybe it's given you too much insight i don't know <laughs> maybe it's not enough i have no idea but you know we we thought we wanted to do it didn't we and it yeah. wasn't comprehensive but it was just it gave you some idea of what we live in and the things we use the facil facilities we have yeah, and I think it was really useful for us to do because it did give us a lot of reminders of things that we knew we needed to do. And some yeah. of those things we do know how to do and we just haven't done them. Bit and of other, laziness on our part. It maybe, is, maybe. and other parts we're not sure how to do. But, you know, when you have Google to look up stuff or you can look at videos on YouTube, it's not really an excuse not to try. But yeah. because your van is such an investment, it's like sometimes you can think you can do something and then just completely mess it up and you've got something completely broken yeah. as opposed to half broken so it's always trying to get over that fear really and just dive in and do it a bit without going overboard and ending up with you know a worse situation nothing. because yeah. she's so old as well mm. so like as Stephen said yesterday it's like you touch something it's a bit like a domino effect so you can try and do something good and it, everything can spiral out of control and make it worse uh, but we just need a bit more confidence in ourselves I think to just give it a bash yeah so that's it then, that's the end of the video. Please like, subscribe, follow if you choose to. Um, and I think that's about it from us. For is today. that the end of the video? Are we sure it is? Well, we've got to go out. We're going to go and meet somebody, but we don't know whether we're going to have time to film anything yeah. today. We did plan to, but we've got up a bit late because we're lazy. So the plan was, we were going, we, well, the plan is we are going over to Whitstable now. We're just going to go and do a couple of other little van things. We're going to give Daisy a wee just around the corner. Um, so empty her tank. And we are going to go and drive over to Whitstable to see a friend. And we were going to do a bit of filming there, but I'm just not sure how much time there's going to be. And frankly, we don't want to do it in a half-assed way where it's like, oh, look, here's the beach, here's the town, bye, see you later. Um, mm. So maybe you're right, maybe we should end it here. Yeah, maybe catch you on the next one. Yeah, OK yeah. then. When we yeah. say maybe, it's like, are we not sure here? <laughs> It's well, still good well, carry we on. We will see you on the next one. It just probably won't be Whitstable. Yeah, that's true. No, it definitely won't be Whitstable.
Right then, on that note, we need to get going, otherwise we're going to be late. Okay, we're ending it then? Yeah, we're ending it then. All right, well, thank you. Please like and subscribe. Did you say all that? I can't remember now, but yeah, if you didn't, then please like and subscribe. Thank you for all your support. And we've just reached a 1,000 subscribers, yeah, so yeah. thank you so thank much. You that. That's really amazing. We've been plugging away for a while. Um, we enjoy doing it anyway, yeah. you know, and we had no expectations of this, but it's just nice to reach that little milestone. Um, 100,000 by next video, please. That would be lovely. Yeah, and I think that what we're going to do from... The pennies that we're going to get from our videos, because it will be pennies. pennies. We're very, very small. <laughs> Anything we do Literal get, pennies. though, I think we've we, we decided we're going to try and keep by for a daisy fund to try yeah. and help keep her on the road. And, like, if eventually we do get a little bit more money from any yeah. more popular videos, which is not likely, but if we do that, that money that that money will go towards that to keep yeah keep, keep us going and things like insurance and stuff like that so that that can just come up as a big bill out of nowhere well you know it's coming but just even if we just put it towards things like that insurance tax even yeah. fuel you know that's all daisy related yeah. so it's only a few pounds and pence but it's a few pounds and pence we didn't have before yeah so. Yeah. All right, let's end it then. I'm yeah. going to end it now. I'm just going to force you to end it. You normally right. tell me. So, All right, All right then. All right. right, well, thank you for watching. We will see you on the next video. And we are going to go on a little mini travel journey. What's the term? I don't know. Uh, road trip somewhere in Britain. That doesn't tell you anything. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> see you later.